big lobes here. What do you think that is? The liver, yes. So what I want you to do is with your frog, I want you to kind of lift up the liver and identify the gallbladder. So I have my right lateral lobe. I'm gonna lift up my medial lobe and I can see kind of between here, there's this, it's red on mine, but it's usually a, a gross green color. This is the gallbladder. So the gallbladder exists between the right lobe and the medial lobe of the liver. Anterior to the gallbladder, we can see the area where the ventral abdominal vein enters the liver up here. So I have my heart, and then I have right lobe, medial lobe, and left lobe of the liver. Between the right lobe and the medial lobe, I find the gallbladder. So other big things that are recognized here, this big structure that forms a J shape is the stomach. Just like our shark, it has a greater curvature and a lesser curvature. When you kind of lift up on the stomach, you'll notice that it doesn't have a big mesentery hanging from the greater curvature of the stomach. And also we don't see a spleen like we did in the shark. But this stomach here has a mesentery that covers the lesser omentum, or sorry, the greater omentum is actually in the lesser curve of the stomach. And it's within that greater omentum that we find some diffuse tissue. Here it's just super pink. But it's not really very much. It's just it just kind of forms some diffuse tissue within the greater omentum here. That's the pancreas. Okay, and if we look on the lesser curve of the, the stomach, we can see that it as it comes around in this lower part of the J here, you can actually see a pinch or a lessening in the diameter of the tube before the tube continues on. That is where the pyloric sphincter is. Okay, P pinch pyloric sphincter pancreas. Now, you have to kind of unravel all of the intestines but what you'll see is that the duodenum continues kind of straight from the pyloric sphincter all the way across. Okay, and that part of the duodenum, the first part of the small <coughs> intestine, is connected to the stomach by the greater omentum. When the intestine turns and becomes super curly. I'm gonna kind of peel it out of my frog here. When it becomes super curly and it's connected by this mesentery here, it becomes the two, the later two thirds of the small intestine. We can't tell the difference between those two parts. So the small intestine usually has three parts. A duodenum is the most anterior, the jejunum in the middle, and then the ileum connects to the posterior, the large intestine. Since we can't tell the difference between the jejunum and the ileum in the frog, we call it the jejunoileum. And it's recognizable because it's before the large intestine and it's also in the area where the intestines are very curly and they're hooked together by that mesentery that's the mesentery proper or the lesser omentum. Okay, so the greater omentum sits in the, curv the lesser curvature of the stomach this time and it connects the stomach and the duodenum. It also houses the pancreas. The lesser omentum is found in the curves of the jejunoileum, 
And then if we keep following the jejunohilium, we'll see that there's a dramatic change in diameter. Poor Natalie's frog is all pink. But you can see that it goes from a really thin tube, thin diameter tube, to this really big bolus right here. That large area is called the large intestine. We can't see the rectum, it's behind the pelvis. Other things that I notice. Okay, so my frog has these black and yellow things. This is a female. The ovaries are here. Each of those little black and yellow things is a follicle, an oocyte. And so the frog will extrude all of these eggs when it mates. And just like our, our um, shark, I was trying to say fish, just like our shark, these gonads are attached to the apex of the kidney. So the kidneys look a little different. They're located in the posterior portion of the abdominal cavity, and they're on the dorsal body wall. Or it should be kind of a brownish color. Some of them are colored blue because there's a lot of venous circulation that goes through there. But what we find is that there are a bunch of these yellow, do you guys see a lot of yellow things kind of sticking out toward the apex of the kidney? They're pink and natalie. Mm -hmm. But those are fat bodies. So the frog has little brown fat deposits. And the frog's not very fatty. The fat that it does have, though, is for germ cell production. So the production of um, gametes is what takes most of that energy. Natalie's is laughing. Sorry. Okay, so if you have a bunch of these black and yellow things, those that's the ovary. And then if you kind of peel the ovary up to the side, okay, so here's my ovary. I'm gonna peel it off to the side here. And what I see is, look at all this little tubing. That's oviduct. <laughs> on frogs where they're not so much in the breeding season. Which one is it? It's a question mark button. Here's a little bit better view of these yellow things. See these yellow things right here? Those are fat bodies. And you can see that the very immature ovary here doesn't look anything like the one that has follicles in it. And the tubing, the oviduct right here, is very small compared to the frog that has more mature oocytes. So, as I peel this area back, <coughs> you, see, you can see the oviduct tubing. It rounds the, the outer edge of this structure right here, which is the kidney. Okay, so there's one on each side, the kidneys and Natalie's. Find them. Sometimes you have to take some mesentery off to see things. There's this little brownish thing right here that's on the dorsal body wall that is the kidney. So there's one kidney on each side. And that's going to serve as a landmark for us 
Um, another thing that I want you to notice, so if you pick up the stomach at the curve, the bottom of the J, and you lift it up, you can see a little dark bulbous bean looking organ. That is your spleen. Okay, so I'd like for all of you to make this dissection in your frog and look for those organs. The testes are